A new DirectX 12 benchmark allows explicit multi-GPU, meaning that we can finally pair AMD and NVIDIA GPUs in the same system together, or you could even pair non same cards from the same manufacturer. So if you wanted to do a 970 to 960 for some reason, you could theoretically do that with DirectX 12 in games which support explicit multi-GPU functionality. And the new Ashes of Singularity benchmark is, as far as we're aware, the first game to support officially explicit multi-GPU. And that's what we're benchmarking here today. We're looking exclusively at the feature of multi-GPU for things like a 390X with a 970, a bit odd, but should be interesting. 970s paired with one another, a normal SLI versus that setup, and then a couple of other things thrown in there as well, as you'll see throughout the video. Now, we're also doing a DirectX 11 versus DirectX 12 benchmark, which will look only at the DX11 versus DX12 performance, so we can see where do AMD and NVIDIA have their strengths and weaknesses, and that will be in a separate video coming pretty much immediately after this one. But for today, we're looking at explicit multi-GPU. When we say the word explicit for multi-GPU, we mean that the developers have low-level access to the hardware and are able to better sort tasks so that VRAM and other resources never go unused. This is contrary to DirectX 11, where the API overhead obfuscates low-level access and restricts developers in ways which have limited game graphics, especially on multi-GPU platforms, including the standard SLI and Crossfire setups. With explicit multi-GPU support, the developers are able to use all the VRAM available from multiple devices, something that historically has not been possible, and they're even able to allow mixed card or mixed brand configurations. Before diving deeper though, it's worth pointing out a few key items here. One, mixed brand configurations for GPUs should likely be exceedingly rare, so it's not necessarily a real world use case or benchmark in that regard. You wouldn't intentionally build a new PC and just decide to buy a Fury X and a 9 ATI to use together. It's kind of a weird thing to do. So it'd be the type of thing that happens if you somehow ended up with a spare GPU from another vendor as an upgrade or something like that. And number two for this, to build a PC intentionally in this way would actually be risky as the games would explicitly have to support this kind of combination and they need to be DX12 enabled, of course, which is not that prevalent right now. And it's unlikely that mixed brand configurations would often be tested, so bugs and poor performance are probable in the future for DX12 games. As for same brand configurations, similar challenges apply, but the use case is more likely in that a user may end up with, for instance, a GTX 960 and want to move to a 970, or 970 and want to move to a 980 Ti. And with DX12, you could actually keep the older card, the lower end one, and run them both at the same time, just put the more powerful one in the top slot in the event you have to disable the second one for DX11 games or whatever. And this works for AMD as well, if you want to do a 390X to a Fury or something like that. The same development support flaw exists, but the use case is exceedingly more likely. Oxide Games built Ashes of Singularity on their Nitrous engine, which they call a fourth generation engine, and this takes a job-based approach to task management within games. So instead of doing something like CryEngine does, currently anyway, which is basically spawn a thread for each different task, one thread for rendering, one for physics, one for game logic, one for AI or sound or whatever, instead of taking that approach, the job-based approach instead just assigns tasks as they come in to all the threads as would make sense for whatever type of CPU you're using or API or whatever. So in the case of Nitrous and the new engine from Oxide, the DirectX 12 support basically uses this job-based approach to send out all the jobs asynchronously to whatever device should be processing that particular job. And by asynchronously, I mean that basically it's sort of parallel processing within parallel processing. So on a GPU, you're already a parallel processing unit. That's what a GPU does. It can process multiple things simultaneously, and that's why they're so powerful for things like graphics. Now, with asynchronous processing, the bottleneck, the traditional bottleneck of sort of queue blocking within the GPU is eliminated. And that's because even though a GPU might be a parallel processor, it still builds up this queue of things that, in DirectX 11 anyway, needs to execute in a certain order in order to get to the next task. And that is removed with asynchronous processing. And AMD uses their ACEs for this. And that's been a particular talking point for AMD over the past few months, as you've seen in some of our videos. Let's look at some of our initial limited benchmarks. So we've run a few dozen tests over the past two days on Ashes of Singularity, and many of these will be published in a separate DX11 versus DX12 article and video. And for now, we're just looking at the one question, which is what happens when you combine video cards 
of different make or model and different brands. So what happens when we do these cross-brand configurations? For example, one of our tests was a 390X with a 970, and we're here to look at that performance because it's the first time we've been able to actually do that in a game, in a real-world scenario. Because Ashes of Singularity supports MDA and LDA approaches to multi-graphics, we thought it'd be fun to test what happens when we use this MDA approach, which is multi-display adapter. That means you eliminate the bridge and you, in this case, mix AMD with NVIDIA. We used an SLI bridge for normal GTX 970s and SLI without going cross-brand across model or anything like that. And you can see all of those initial results here. NVIDIA devices currently show almost no difference between DX11 and DX12 within Ashes of Singularity. And that's something we currently suspect is attributable to a lack of driver support. Looking strictly at DX12 explicit multi-GPU functionality, running a GTX 970 and an R9 390X in conjunction yields a pretty significant gain over just a standalone 390X or even a standalone GTX 970. This is because the game is able to access features on both cards and utilize them more fully creating a sort of Frankenstein's monster version of the more familiar SLI and Crossfire setups. The average FPS for our 390X plus 970 config at 1080p and high settings with 2-tab MSAA, you may know as 2x MSAA, ran 96.5 FPS on an impressive average frame time of just 10.36 milliseconds, very consistent throughout the test, and consistent enough that there's little visible tearing for the most part. Now with a single 970 or even SLI 970s, we did see pretty substantial tearing at times, and that ties back into the driver issues when you're running an NVIDIA device as a primary or a SLI setup for the GPU. The 390X standalone pushed 65.7 FPS average, which is a 37% difference against the weird combo configuration we ran. And a single GTX 970 runs at 50.65 FPS presently, about 26% slower than the 390X and 62% slower than the combo config. SLI GTX 970s were unimpressive at this time, running only 41.5% faster than a single GTX 970 and markedly slower than our unlikely AMD NVIDIA combo. What you're looking at now aren't our charts, but they're actually charts generated by Ashes of Singularity. Now these are specifically for the DX11 bench that we ran. The DX12 bench contains even more metrics and charts. And the purpose of showing these on the screen is really just to demonstrate to you how truly overwhelming the data provided by Ashes of Singularity is. It's a massive amount of data. At times it felt more like data dredging rather than data analysis. And there's a lot of crunching we still have to do for additional content for Ashes over the next few days and for DX12 and 11 and all that. So do stay tuned for that. As for now, looking at our own charts and data for explicit multi-GPU functionality, we can definitively state that cross-manufacturer GPU support is functional, seems reasonably well supported by the Nitrous game engine, and is definitely an interesting item to look at for performance in the future. Now, is it something you'll use as an end user? Is it an actual use case in the real world? I, I don't really think so, but it's certainly cool, it's interesting, and for those off cases where it is a use case, where it will happen, in real computers, then, well, it looks like it's supported. This is all very interesting though. AMD presently holds a very clear advantage with DX12 in this specific game. I have not published any other game tests just yet, but do stay tuned for those because that could be where it gets a bit more interesting between two manufacturers. For now though, for Ashes of Singularity specifically, AMD's definitely got a lead in terms of the DX12 performance gains over DX11. They've really shown their ACE ability here, their asynchronous compute engine is getting to stretch its legs a bit, finally, with this better API. And that means that they're taking pretty big strides forward from their DX11 performance, which is actually pretty, pretty darn bad. So the DX12 gap versus DX11, that delta for AMD is quite large, whereas NVIDIA, we're seeing, for the most part, identical performance between 11 and 12. And that's really just a lack of probably driver support right now, we'd think, for this particular game and we'll try and stay on top of that as things change. But for the immediate future, we are looking at a DX12 versus DX11 benchmark check back for that. And as far as the asynchronous processing on multi-GPUs that are not the same brand and manufacturer, it works, it's kind of cool, uh, but I, what do you do with that information really other than it's neat? So that's all for this time. If you like this type of coverage, as always, hit the Patreon link to the official video, hit that article in the description below if you wanna read more about this benchmark and see more charts. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.